what this study uh, showed was that in patients with psoriasis and uh, rheumatoid arthritis who received certain anti-inflammatory agents such as anti-DNF inhibitors or hydroxychloroquine, the risk of developing diabetes was uh, significantly decreased. There are studies which have shown a very slight increase of the risk of uh, diabetes in uh, rheumatoid arthritis, but others haven't. Um, so if there is an increased risk of diabetes in rheumatoid arthritis, it's probably very, very small. But what is way more important is the fact that we regard patients with rheumatoid arthritis and also psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis as uh, individuals at a high risk for cardiovascular disease. So. Um, managing addi additional cardiovascular risk factors uh, such as uh, diabetes or hypertension or hyperlipidemia is the main goal in the management of, of patients with these diseases. Oh yes, um, uh, as, I, as I said before, um, managing traditional cardiovascular risk factors such as hypertension, smoking, um, hyperlipidemia is a very, very important component in treating patients uh, with these uh, diseases. And talking about smoking, um, smoking cessation wouldn't only be important for rheumatoid arthritis patients to decrease their cardiovascular risk, but also to uh, uh, have positively affect the uh, activity of their arthritic disease. Well, the, the point I wanted to make with this uh, comparison was that you know, well-performed epidemiologic research can uh, really point us towards uh, new applications of drugs that have been developed for a completely uh, different purpose. Um, and talking about aspirin, its initial uh, application was uh, treatment of inflammatory arthritis and all kinds of arthritic uh, disorders. And further down the road, with uh, uh, large, well-performed epidemiologic studies, we found out what a significant beneficial impact this medication has on the risk of uh, cardiovascular disease and uh, 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 stroke stroke prevention. Um, and you know, we potentially see a similar uh, phenomenon here, where a drug like hydroxychloroquine, for example, has been initially used for treatment of malaria, then found an application in the treatment of uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and now may turn out to be an important agent to uh, limit the risk of uh, developing type 2 diabetes. But um, I think what is clearly needed uh, before potentially transitioning those findings into clinical practice um, would be uh, prospective data that would confirm that we can indeed positively influence uh, insulin resistance and the risk of developing diabetes in these patients. So not a study where we have to go back and have to dig through records or ICD codes, but really prospectively enroll patients, uh, follow them through time, and see if uh, their anti-inflammatory medications do have a positive impact on the risk of developing diabetes and much more importantly the risk of uh, developing cardiovascular events because that's really what we would like to prevent.